Hi everyone in this video we will discuss a very powerful tool called helm you will learn all the main concepts related to the helm in the simplest terms we will also see some common use cases to understand why and where we can use the helm there are multiple versions of helm and in this video i will discuss two major version of helm and their differences so let's start helm is a package manager for kubernetes It helps you manage Kubernetes applications. Helm chat helps you define, install and upgrade even the most complex Kubernetes application. It is similar to other command line package management utility like yum or apt. Any deployment on Kubernetes will consist of yaml files. Helm allows us to package those yaml files and distribute them across different registries. Here registry is like a repository similar to a docker hub. These registries can be public or private. To understand this better, let's take an example. Let's assume we have a Kubernetes cluster with many applications. It is common to have a monitoring service to help us with our cluster. Prometheus is one of the most common open source monitoring and alerting toolkit. So in order to set up Prometheus monitoring in your cluster, you will need to set up multiple Kubernetes components like config map, cluster role, service account, and other deployment yaml files it will take a lot of time to write the yaml file for all of these components and even if you write it once testing if the configuration is proper will take some time too or if you want to deploy the same thing to other kubernetes cluster you will need to edit configuration in all the deployment files manually since this is one of the common deployment with few configuration changes So the best way to solve this kind of issue is to bundle the most common configurations into a package and this package is known as helm chart. Using helm you can create your own bundle. You can create your own templates and can use an already created one by someone else. You can create your own charts and can either push to a private registry or a public registry so that someone else can make use of your charts. You can find charts for most common deployments like database applications such as MongoDB, MySQL, etc. or monitoring applications like Prometheus which we saw in our examples earlier. So now let us see how you can use the helm chart. Suppose you have a Kubernetes cluster and you need some kind of deployment. You can search the helm chart either on Google or using the helm search command or from the helm hub registry directly. Once you have found your required chart, you can use the helm install command to install the package. Sometimes a direct installation is not possible as the repo which you would be using may not have that package. In that case, you may have to add the repo using helm repo add command. Now let's see how a chart looks like and what is the directory structure. Typically a package will consist of these folder structures. The top level folder is the name of the chart and inside the folder you will find the chart.yaml file which contains all the meta information related to chart like name version etc the next file is values.yaml and will contain all the default values for the templates these values can be overridden we will see how this values.yaml file works with templates later in this video so watch till the end next is the charts folder This folder will contain all the dependencies for the chart and at the last the template folder will contain the actual templates. So the flow goes like this. When you execute the helm install command, template file will be filled with the values from values.yaml file and will create a Kubernetes manifest which can then be deployed to the cluster. Now let's see how these templates look like. With Helm you can define a blueprint for a deployment file. Suppose in Kubernetes cluster you have multiple microservices. So to deploy each of these service you will create a separate deployment yaml file. These deployment files may be same and the only difference in these files can be docker image and the name of the application. Using Helm you can create a template of these files and modify the values dynamically. A template file will look something like this. and instead of passing the actual value in the file you have to provide the syntax as a placeholder and these values will get populated from the values your yaml file 
So the benefit of using the template is that instead of writing and maintaining multiple files for a deployment, you just have to maintain one file and the same can be deployed to multiple environments. Let us now see how we can provide the values to the template file. A default values.yaml file is provided by the chart, but these values can be overridden. Suppose you want to deploy the same template in different environments, you can pass different values.yaml file using the file option in the help install command. You can also provide multiple files and the priority will be given to the rightmost file specified by you. The way the default value file works is little different. Suppose you have created a second values file and are overriding only the version, the helm will collect the version from the second values file and the rest information from the default values.yaml file, producing the following result. I hope now you are getting the complete picture of how the helm chart works. Now let us see the difference between the helm version 2 and helm version 3. Helm version 2 comes with two parts. One is client and other is the server, also known as tiller. Whenever you run helm chart install, the client sends a request to the tiller. For every create or change request, tiller stores a copy of the configuration for reference. This helps helm to upgrade the same configuration instead of deleting and creating a new one every time. Or if something goes wrong with the upgrade, you can also use this to roll back the changes. This looks very handy but this setup has a downside. The tiller has a lot of power inside the cluster. It has permission to create, update and delete the configuration which is a big security concern. To solve this security concern, in Helm 3, they have removed the tiller and now it is just Helm binary. Because of this, it has lost the functionality to act like a release manager. There are few syntax changes too which comes with Helm 3 and has made the use of Helm little bit difficult. I hope you have understood. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe if you like the content. If you face any difficulty or have a doubt, you can always post it in the comment section below and I'll answer them. To learn more about Kubernetes, you can watch my Kubernetes playlist. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay safe and keep learning.